sometimes I feel like we're selling our own country, you know. Um, you just watch, you observe. Um, sometimes to get visas to other nations, we have to go through such a long process. And ours will come and they do a v uh, uh, an e-visa or just a visa for a very um, small amount of money. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Mwenye Inchi Monday. Uh, where we discuss all things governance and prison break for Kenya in 2019 and beyond. Um, I'm wearing black and gold and I've been noticing I've been wearing a lot of black and gold, especially when I'm called somewhere and I've been thinking about the significance of it. And it's the fact that the people of Kenya are black and black is beautiful and a lot of gold because I feel like we're in a season of economy and where there's going to be increase in the economy according to Isaiah 60 verse 3, 1 to 3 and verse 11. So I've been feeling that a lot and just been feeling, you know, we're very, very special people in this, um, in this continent. Um, and black is beautiful. And so I want us to celebrate our, 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 our blackness, our darkness, our color, and really explore what that means. And then the gold and the wealth on this continent. And, you know, I've been reading a lot of articles about how wealthy um, Africa is and how is Africa is resourced uh, with so many resources, including people, um, and how everyone is coming into this continent um, as an emerging market. You know, it, I, it, it, they, they sometimes I've, I've had it referred to like almost like the wild, wild west when people went out there and they were panning for gold. So this is where gold is, so significant of my outfit. So every time we wear black and gold, um, let's just share that theme. Let's say that, you know, Kenya is beautiful, Africa is beautiful, the black people of of this continent are amazing. We're not a dark continent. There's nothing like that. Uh, the light of God has come and the light of God came anyway and we're more enlightened. But I think um, as I say that I was thinking of just a caution that we have to, I think from what I'm observing, we have to be careful that we don't experience an economic colonialism. So at first people came in from the west and they colonized us physically and it's amazing that we're able to break through from that and i've been reflecting on that as well that was serious um a serious breakthrough to gain our independence but now i feel like there's a threat of a second kind of um, colonialism and it's an economic colonialism and let me allow me to paint a picture it's like when a lot of people come into this country and they're foreigners and they start businesses and they grow and those businesses are almost indigenous to us and they would work here but i don't know i don't i'm not quite sure why they don't work but I'm just thinking, you know, something, somebody needs to do something. We need to, I feel, get into a situation where we cannot, you cannot do business in this country as a foreigner without the support, without um, the partnership of a, of a Kenyan. And I would pray that it's not just um, lip service, that we're not just lending lip service to that partnership, but it's a partnership that, that drives growth, that drives development, that drives skills, that causes us to be skilled as well. Because sometimes I feel like we're selling our own country, you know? Um, you just watch, you observe. Um, sometimes to get visas to other nations, we have to go through such a long process. And ours will come and they do a v uh, uh, an e-visa or just a visa for a very, a um, small amount of money. So a lot of people are coming into this country. A lot of people are taking the resources of this nation. And sometimes when I have that conversation with my daughter, she says, but you're just like one of the other presidents who say, these people are just coming to take our resources. But I'm like, no. You know, when I watch, we can't allow ourselves to go through an economic colonialism. We can't. And it's going to happen. Um, if we're not careful, if we're not deliberate, if we're not strategic towards it, if we don't pay it lip service, and also if we don't, I don't know, it's a hard word to say, but if we don't just bribe our way through it, if we just don't corrupt our way through it. Because the other thing is, as we say, let's put in systems to ensure that if people do business in this nation, they do business well, with the people of the nation and the people of the nation benefit. We don't like to create another, another income stream for corrupt people to now come and receive bribes so that they can give people licenses. You know, it's just a, a whole marriage of things. So even we have not, have not thought through it completely, but I'm asking other thinkers, other thought leaders, other um, leaders in the, in, the, in the community and in the society and on the continent to think through that process. And especially in Kenya, it's like we've allowed everyone to be, um, to be, to be a Kenyan. And we haven't safeguarded our Kenyanness, and then we're not stopping the West from coming also to come and and almost and take over 
our cities, our nations, our communities, and we've just got to make it harder because they make it hard for us as well. And it's right to protect yourself. You know, recently I went to Israel and I'm amazed at how they, they, they protect their, their borders and their, and, their, and their immigration systems and, and actually their borders. I guess it's their borders. They really protect them. But in reflection, it's because they have so many enemies. I mean, they have serious enemies. So it's like everybody's trained. Everybody's trained to be a soldier. Everybody is, is, is trained to defend their nation. And that's very, I think the word is, it's a really good cause. But what I liked is watching them in action. Because, you know, you can train people, but how they act is completely different. But you can see them. They are alert. They are awake. They are defending their country. Um, they won a, a war in six days, you know. They are, they, they are under threat. So that has sort of made them, you know, I was going to say woke. They are, they are woke up to the fact that the things are not okay. And, and they have very many people who don't, who don't, um, who don't like them, who would want to do them harm. Therefore, their borders are not porous, you know. It's, it's not easy just to get into Israel. Actually, I was laughing because uh, we've just recently come from a, a pilgrimage. Uh, we do one every two years. But the questions to exit the nation were, were stronger and more interrogative than the questions to come into the nation. And that's amazing, you know, because I want to know, did somebody give you something? Did you carry something? You've got to tell the truth. You've got to know where you went. You, of course, you always tell the truth, but it's a bit, you know, and people are in your face and they are very young. I think that's another thing I notice about them. They are really young. They are so young that you could dismiss them, but we all know that they're military trained. And we're back to my thing of, you know what, Kenyans, we've got to be careful. Yes, we love people. And I think Kenya is an extremely diverse society. There's no race, religion, color that you cannot find within our borders. But I'm also saying, what are we doing to make sure that it's not the stronger who come here and get stronger? Uh, what are we doing about the weaker part of our society? What are we doing about those who are less educated, those who are marginalized or threatened? There's a threat to marginalize them. And, and these days, I think it's nearly, it's a lot of Kenyans, you know? People are tired, people are exhausted, uh, people are trying so hard. And, and um, in this, they're trying, I think one of the things that we have to do is make it easier for them to operate as Kenyans, as the indigenous people of this nation, um, to be able to operate in this nation, to succeed in this nation, to thrive from this nation. And I pray there's not another exodus of people running away to other nations to go and make it work out there rather than make it work here because Kenya is beautiful. And one of these days I must do a video of, thank God, God saved us from what I sometimes refer to as our escapade to America. You know, when we we're young, I don't understand why my generation was completely obsessed, I guess this one is as well, with going to America. As I've become older and wiser and gone there, oh my Lord, I'm so glad we stayed here. Why? Because also of the issues that affect uh, people of color. They're very compounded um, issues that affect people of color. And I think East West home is always best. And I'm glad that we're here trying to make this nation work, trying to survive here, thrive, flourish, and to leave a legacy for um, the next generation and to leave a, a Kenya that is intact. Um, yeah, so I just thought that's food for thought. And I think we should have more conversations around this, which I will endeavor to do. But I want us to celebrate Africa, celebrate Kenya, celebrate black is beautiful and celebrate the wealth and the economy that is coming to this nation and that we must strategically place in the hands of the right people. God bless you. Have a very amazing Wenyunchi Monday. God bless. Bye-bye.